Let's do a calculation that's a titration calculation. We'll start with 100 milliliters of 0.1 molar acetic acid, HAC, and add 5 milliliters of a strong base solution, 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide, strong base. The question is, what is the pH after those two are mixed? So I can think about this as a titration. If I look at my titration curve, I'm starting with the weak acid HA, and I'm adding some base. The question is, how far along on the titration curve does this addition of strong base take me? Does it take me to the center of the buffer region? Is it enough to take me to the equivalence point? Well, let's look at this. We have HAC plus water forming acetic acid and H3O plus. That's one of the equilibria we have to deal with for this problem. But we want to find out, well, what are the initial conditions? How much HAC, how much AC minus, and how much H3O plus are there at a point, and then we'll allow the equilibria to expand. And this is how you do equilibrium uh, calculations. You find a point that you can nail down, say, OK, these will be my starting co conditions. And then you apply the equilibrium to see how it shifts from that one point. And that's the great thing about equilibria. They approach the same equilibria no matter where you start from. So as long as you can nail down one point that you know and then apply e equilibrium from there, you're going to get to the correct equilibrium condition. So let's do that. Let's say, well, I have a, a 100 milliliters, 0.1 liters, of 0.1 molar HAC. How many moles of acetic acid is that? Well. Molarity times volume is the number of moles. So 0.01 moles of acetic acid. Now this is assuming no dissociation. That's fine. I can choose any point along my equilibrium to be my starting point. So I'm also going to say, well, how much base do I add? I'm going to add these 5 mils of sodium hydroxide. How many moles of base is that? Well, it's 0.05 liters, 5 milliliters, times the molarity, 1, is 0.05 moles of OH minus. So I can say, well, why don't I start my equilibrium calculations, my titration calculations, at the point where 0.1 moles of HAC have just reacted with these 0.05 moles of OH minus. And I choose that because the weak acid reacts completely with the strong base. That's a very strong reaction to favor the products. That's this reaction, the weak acid reacting with the strong base. This has a very large equilibrium constant. It forms water. Formation of water drives this. So that's not really even equilibrium. That one just goes all the way towards products. So if we start there and say, what happens after that occurs? Are there an equilibrium in effect? That will calculate the pH of the solution. So let's do that. We'll say uh, these two will react completely. So every mole of base will react with a mole of acid. And I'll have, this is essentially half of this. So half of my base, excuse me, half of my acid will react with this base. And I'll, ha I'll form 0.05 moles of the conjugate base, so the acid reacts with the base to form the conjugate base. We can see that happening. Here, the acid reacting with the base to form the conjugate base. In this case, I've added half the number of moles of HA that I originally had, so 0.05 moles of this base react with that acid to form this conjugate base. React with half of these react. So I have equal concentrations, essentially, of this and this at this point in the titration. So equal concentrations of these two. Half of my acid has been converted into its conjugate base. My OH minus concentration has gone to 0. I've used up 1 for 1. One of those reacts with one of those, producing one of these. So let's treat these now as the initial concentrations in an equilibrium calculation and see where that gets us. So here's an equilibrium that will occur. I have HAC and AC minus. I know those concentrations are equal. So my initial concentrations 
of each of these, and these are actually um, numbers of moles, not exactly concentrations, but I know they're both in about 100 milliliters. So I can convert these easily into concentrations, moles per liter. So I'll do that here. I'll say my initial concentrations are moles per liter, these divided by 0 0.1. That gives me 0 0.5 molar, 0 0.05 molar HAC initially, 0 0.05 molar AC minus initially. Now this initial point is quite a ways into our calculation, but it's just the first point where I'm going to allow the equilibria to occur. In all the previous steps, I've said they go to completion. So now I'm at a point where everything has gone 100% and I'm going to let the equilibria start to take over. And I do that at this point. And I can do that for equilibria at any point. Choose a point, nail it down, say this is where I'm going to start, and then let your equilibria take over. So the change to get to equilibrium is a little of this will dissociate. And actually, at this point, I'm not even sure. I'm not sure if the equilibrium will go this way or this way. I'm just going to assume a little of this goes away. And if it does, it'll produce a little of this. Since there's equal amounts, who knows? Maybe it'll shift back this way. I suspect it'll go this way, though, because I think HAC is a strong enough acid to dissociate a little bit more. That'll produce a little H3O+. And I'm saying initially there was none of this. My initial calculation is these two things in equal concentration in water. So the equilibrium concentrations are 0.05 minus x, 0.05 plus x, and the H3O plus concentration, x. I want to calculate that x because that's the H3O plus concentration, and that will get me the pH. So let's do that. We'll, we'll apply our equilibrium. The product concentrations, 0.05 plus x, times x, over the reactant concentrations, 0.05 minus x, has to equal Ka for acetic acid. So that's 10 to the minus 4.75. 4.75 is the Ka for acetic acid. Let's do that math. We can assume that x is small compared to 0.05. We can check to see if it is later. So let's just assume it is. If that's the case, then these quantities are about the same. Subtracting a little bit or adding a little bit, x to 0.05 leaves you about 0.05. Those two cancel and gives me x is 10 to the minus 4.75. That is the H3O plus concentration. And notice that I left the, the k like this because I knew after I get the H3O plus concentration, I'm going to take minus log of it anyway. So I'm going to go right back to the exponent. So if I calculate the pH, that's minus log of 10 to the minus 4.75, which is 4.75. So what I found is that the pH is numerically equal to the pKa, that's just coincidental, that occurs at the midpoint of titrations, halfway between the start and the equivalence point. So where am I on my titration curve? Let's have a look. My titration curve, I go from my weak acid to its conjugate base. And in this calculation, I've added enough to convert half of my initial acid into its conjugate base. I'm right smack in the middle here of this buffer region. I'm halfway towards the equivalence point. So the pH at halfway towards the equivalence point, for any weak acid strong base titration, the pH will numerically be equal to the pKa. That's just a feature of titration curves. It's interesting numerical equivalence. So what I have here, after adding some strong base to a weak acid solution, going halfway to the equivalence point, the pH is 4.75. And that's numerically equal to the PKA.